I can't see you yet. My joint didn't come up. Yeah, I see that. You got my, okay. you got my head cracker right now, man. <laughs> oh, it's, side, it's sideways? I got you sideways, man. So oh, tonight on Head Crack with Todd Wharton, we're going to be coming to you sideways. <laughs> Let me see. How do I do this? How can I? You got your phone horizontal. There you go. I had it. Oh, it's not Zoom. That's what it is. Okay. Oh, here we How are we doing? Okay, hold on. You're starting to get me dizzy, bro. <laughs> my bad. My bad. Uh, that's the flip this joint. Let me see. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the stand I got. Hold on. And you're a pretty boy, man. You know, I ain't gay or nothing, but we definitely have to see your face. You got to back it off the wall. <laughs> Word. Why, Hold on. Like two months from now, people are going to be like, yo, that dance is my jam. Have you seen Face Time with Tom Ward in the new head crack? He was like <laughs> that, and he came up, and then Mr. Cheek started coming in, and it just started doing one of these, like, Night of the Roxbury type of thing. It was kind of dope. Back and forth, right? Back, back, forth, and forth. All right. All right, this should be better. Okay. All right, so we're going to give you a proper. So I just showed a clip of uh, Haunted Mansion. And, guys, I want to I want to welcome this guy. He's an actor, producer, acting coach. He's doing a school now. And if you guys don't know by now, he's been in some great films, Notorious Power, Brotherly Love, Losing Isaiah, Haunted Mansion, Nerves, Do a Little Too. Big Mama House 3, and Get Rich or Die Trying. So let's welcome my man, Mr. Mark John Jeffries. Mark, how you doing, brother? I'm good, bro. Can't complain, man. I know. I see you doing your thing, man. You know the last time I interviewed you, it was nothing but love. And we talk about a lot of the old school. And um, But I definitely want to talk about everything new that you're doing. Because if people have been on another planet, people should really recognize. And I think they know who you are by now. And uh, first of all, your dad, he's such a cool guy, man. Let me tell you, I spoke to him for a minute, and we were laughing. And I'm like, yo, I can't even get a hold of your son. He's like, man, he goes through phones, numbers. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm man, like, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I'm like, could you tell him I'm not an ex-girlfriend? I actually just want to chop it up with him. That's it. Because <laughs> he's probably like, man, who's this fool? Is that Taikisha? I ain't answering this phone. No, no, I don't no. even see it. I, I'm I'm so tied up that like normally I speak to people when I'm going to reach out to them. You know, like certain yeah. people that hit me, I get so many calls and text messages during the course of a day that this times that I'll hit a friend, like my close friends, and I realize they text me like two months ago. Yeah, I'll be like, yo, my fault, bro. I was wondering why you ain't reach out, <laughs> and it, they used to be like twenty messages. Yeah, yeah I was trying to find a pigeon to send you a note, but I didn't have your address. And I figured by the time he got to you, he probably died because it's still cold out there. So I'm like, I don't even know how to get to you anymore. Yeah, you know? that wouldn't work. I'm pigeon. going to your pop now. So every time you call your dad, I'm going to be like, yo, Mark, what up? You're going to be like, wait, you're at my house? And I'm going to be like, yeah, man, me and your pop are chilling. We're playing cards. I'm hanging out with your mom's. And I got your son here, too. Why does your son keep calling me dad? Like, what the heck is going on? And he's like, man, I can't even find Pop either, so you might need dad. Like, what? I keep the little man with me. Where are you? Come here. Yeah, where is the kid? Chair. Come here, man. You behind this the kid chair? is adorable. I want everybody to see this Look kid. This kid is Say hi. Hi. What up, man? How you doing? Good. Yeah? It's kind of weird, right? You're looking at me like, Yo, who's this dude on the camera, Dad? He ain't family. Does he have a present for me? <laughs> <laughs> so what's your kid's name, man? What's your name? My name is Liam. Liam what? Liam Jeffries. All right, let him know. Liam Jeffries. That is a dope, dope name, man. That's a, that's a, that's a superstar name right there. <laughs> Think about it. You got Liam Neeson as the first name and Jeffries as the last name. That's a powerful name right there, boy. Lee boy. Look at him, man, looking like a little John Legend. Look at that kid. <laughs> Say bye to everybody. Bye. 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 I'll bye. see you soon. See you soon. Go play. Right. Go play. Yeah, he's cute, man. So, 
I love that you brought him in. So let's start there, man. How does it feel? Because I see a lot of things that you're doing. And you know I respect people that take care of their kids. That's a big, big thing with me. Mm -hmm. um, how's your relationship with you and your son? Because I see you guys doing so many great things. Has, has it made you a better man? Oh, yeah, of course, man. You know, being a father brings out a completely different part of you. So for me, like, it, every everybody growing, you know, you, you think you mature until yeah. you start learning new responsibility, you know? So until you've had a certain amount or level of responsibility, um, you, you, you can be mature in certain aspects of life, but it's a whole different type of maturity. So having a son, it just made me really learn how to put somebody else first, you know? Uh, it really taught me real responsibility. And then even more so, it just helped me with just the way I see my career. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I want to be able to do work that I can watch with my son. You know, I want to do work that 20 years from now, when he's 25 to 30 and, well, he's three. So let's say 28 plus years from now, when he's in his 30s and he has children of his own, he can show them the work that I've done, you know, and, and they be proud of it. So it's, it's helped me a lot. Mentally, it's been a big adjustment and it's been for the best. Yeah, which is, which is awesome. I'm glad you're saying that. Now, as a father, you know how this industry is. Um, I know you'll support him in any aspect or anything that he wants to do. And that's one of the great things about you. People don't know you. I, I've, I've known you for a while, but the reason why I really like you and respect you, you're just straight up humble and you're, good, and you're a good dude. And you came from a father who always supported you. Now, would you encourage him to get into this industry? Or would you like him to see doing something else? Because we know this industry. I mean, I don't, I don't feel it's for me to decide what my son does with, you know, his life. So what I plan on doing and what I've been doing is I'm going to introduce him to everything. I, I feel like we're born with many talents. We're born with many blessings and gifts. And sometimes we don't explore everything that we may be great at. You know, there could have been another Tiger Woods that's never picked up a golf club because he was stuck playing chess or another LeBron James that never picked up a basketball because he was, you know, cooking somewhere or another astrophysicist that could have created some new kind of interstellar technology, you know, but he was working at Chick-fil-A and never really explored what other talents they may have. So with, with Liam, I'm going to introduce him to everything under the sun and the things that he likes and that he actually – seems to enjoy are the things that I'll keep him involved in, you know, but um, mm -hmm. he's already acting He because he likes to, he loves taking pictures. So he's modeling. He's had like Jordan campaigns and Foot Locker campaigns and wow. uh, a couple of Nike ads, you know, so he's done a lot of shoots. Um, so he's already in it and he enjoys it, but you know, things change. Sometimes he may get a little older and want to do something else. So we'll see. Yeah. And and it's good that you're in the industry because one one things I see from the business side of the industry um, is parents want to put their kid into this industry, but they don't understand the difficulties and, and the lanes that you need to stay in. So you know firsthand. So when he, when your son's doing these things, you know right away if this is right for him or if this is wrong for him because you've been there, because you were a child star. So you had to see it firsthand at the ins and out of this industry, which I think is great for him because you're definitely a role model to not just him, but obviously to kids out there that you can be a child star, but also build a career from being a child star because we all know not a lot of child stars make it after a certain age. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously a lot of their parents play a role in a lot of the downfalls. Like we saw what happened with Macaulay Culkin and now with Britney Spears. And I mean, it's horrible, you know? So I'm loving the fact that you and your dad keep your lane, but you keep really the moral aspect of raising your son, which is really cool. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Now, when you were picking roles, okay, from your past films, and obviously at the time you're picking it based on your talents, uh, possibly being typecast or whatever, with your son now, are you more strategic about the roles that you're choosing uh, 
because you know he's going to see every one of these films, or does that not matter right now? Um, I mean, it, it's a little bit of both, right? It, it's still about, I, I feel like I've done too much work to be typecast at this point. Um, yeah. But it's still about just my direction. Where do I want to be? You know, like, my career has to be my career. It has to be what I see for myself. And sometimes right. when you just accept any role that's thrown your way, then you're allowing, you know, Hollywood or the opportunity itself to mold and shape your career into what someone else sees it to be, you know? So um, for me personally, it, it's more so that. Now with my son, it's just like, I mean, morally, man, you know, um, there's, a, there's always a bar. There's always things that a person will and won't do, you know? So just like I've always had that moral conscious because of my upbringing and my parents, but now it's even more so with my son, you know, it's like, what what message am I passing on to him? What mm -hmm. what will he learn or take away about his father from watching this movie? Because when everybody else sees the character that I played and sees me as an actor, he sees dad. So whatever message that movie holds, it's almost as if I'm telling my son that I condone whatever it is in this project to a to a sense, you know, until he gets a little older and his understanding changes, but even even then. I just want to make sure that, you know, my morals and my integrity is always intact. Yeah, and that's that should be, you know, goal number one. Um, the blessing right now for you is we all are going through this COVID thing. And right now, I think it's a blessing that he's at an age where he didn't have to start school and then go back and forth all the time because we're noticing a trend with a lot of kids that have been going to school at four or five. I believe that's when they start. Mm -hmm. And now they're home. Now they're back. Now they're home. It's very confusing on his kids. So I have to assume right now you're probably just homeschooling him just to learn the ropes. So by the time school comes back, um, he'll be fine because thank God he's not in that part yet where he's going to kindergarten. Correct? Yeah, that's that's definitely a plus. Um, and then my mom is a teacher. So mm -hmm. my mom like right. works with him a lot at, at the house, too when he's over there, just like, you know, numbers, colors, all of that stuff, ABCs, one, two, threes. Um, but he has a pretty vast support system around him that's just like honed in on his education also. So yeah, I, I, I am glad that he's not introduced, you know, what wasn't introduced to schooling with such inconsistency because they've opened and shut schools and made this amount of kids okay to be in person and then they took it back and then you know, it's, it's been so many different changes that it's been a little bit hard to be consistent, I guess, for the Board of Ed. So the fact that he right. has stability is definitely a plus. Of course. Yes, definitely. Um, speaking of school, um, lately you have developed an acting school, mm -hmm. which is, it's pretty selfless of you. That's pretty great. Um, I was actually speaking with Malik Whitfield, who I believe you know, uh, last week. And he started coaching as well. And I want to get into that because he said that giving back and helping more people develop it was an amazing thing. Now, you started the school. How has the school been going since this whole COVID situation? Has it been better because now you have to do virtual learning? Or do you find it more conducive when it's in person? Um, so I actually shut the school down. Uh, when COVID started, and I haven't opened it back up since, uh, just because I feel like I, I, I feel like the takeaway is different with virtual learning, you know. And and I had students that were working with me for a while, so to now like backtrack and now reintroduce a different element or philosophy into their training, I didn't feel it would have really been. Uh, conducive for where they were trying to go, you know, so I shut it down. Uh, when I shut it down? Yeah, March, mid March of 2020, and um, haven't brought it back yet because there's still all of these different rules about how many people could be in the rooms and things like that. And then my, my schedule has been a little crazy, like, I've been from project to project for the last few, so uh, May though, yeah, May, because what month is this? It's April, right? Yeah, we're in April. Yeah, it's been yeah. almost a, It's crazy how it's been over a flying. year already. Yeah, it's flying. So April yeah. is going to be... I mean, May is going to... I'm going to re, reopen classes. Mm -hmm. 
you right. Know? Yeah, it's it's crazy how I was just, and I'm going to repeat myself, it's been a year because I can't believe that it's been this long already. Yeah. You know, it, it goes by like that. And you know how our parents used to say, like, there's never enough time in the day, time flies, blah, blah, blah. When we were kids, we didn't realize that because when you're in school, time goes real slow. Like, yeah. you're always looking at the clock. And I realized once I got out of school, it just – and now um, COVID for me has been a little bit of a blessing because I was able to really revamp this show, everything else that I'm doing. But everybody has a different um, angle of what has happened to what they're doing. Now, speaking of you right now, because getting back to you, um, I'm noticing that you become a producer, mm -hmm. which is great. So tell me about some of the uh, projects that you're producing on, because that's a whole new field of what you're doing, because acting is one thing. But now you're in a whole different lane when it comes to producing. So tell me about some of the things you're working on. Uh, so I just I just finished with a, on a project called uh, Fells High. Uh, it's a, a movie, a feature film. It stars myself, Amari Hardwick, uh, Elise Neal, uh, T.J. Adams, um, my boy Darren Meadows. He's an up and coming. You know, one of my old students actually real strong actor um yeah I, we, we got a nice uh yeah we got a nice cast man so uh it's a feature we shoot we shot in philly kevin uh j nelson is the director writer and producer and he told me about this project about seven years ago when i was shooting brotherly love he was like an assistant on set and he said i got yeah. this project for you man it's gonna be it's gonna be dope i feel like you haven't really been able to show what you're capable of and your range and stuff since losing Isaiah. And I want to give you an opportunity to do that. I'm working on the script. It's going to be dope. And that was that. And then he randomly called me during quarantine around like September and was like, yo, we ready to start the project back up. I got this amount of budget in place, uh, but I don't have many leads. Like I don't have any other big names. I told you I was going to get it done. I got the budget. What could you, who could you get? And I was like, well, talk to distribution, you know, let me know who distribution says they want. And they wanted, uh, Amari Hardwick was one of the names on the list. And Amari is my, that's my big brother. So I yeah. hit Amari yeah. and was like, yo, would you, you know, and he said, sure, send me the script. I'll take a look at it, let you know if I'm interested. He read the script. He was like, I love this project. And the rest was history, you know, and then we attached everybody else and, and that was that, man. So, yeah, fellas, high. We, we wrapped up uh, principal photography about three weeks ago. And um, right now it's undergoing editing and stuff. And, and that one is going to hit. That one is going to hit. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Appreciate Congrats. it. It's always good to work on a project, getting you to a new lane, and it's actually doing really well. Not a lot of people can say that. Um, I'm actually working on something right now. I'm not really good at divulge, but me and KP Amos, John's son, have been friends for a long time. We're actually working on something right now. Uh, I'll talk to you about it at another time, but Dope. I'm getting into these lanes. Yeah, thank you, man. And uh, when you get into a new lane that you're not used to, and I'm not used to this, it's a whole nother beast to take on, boy. It's, yeah. it's just crazy. And people don't understand, like, when people like you are doing acting, you're getting into producing, and as you get older, I'm sure you're going to start directing, because that's what a lot of great actors turn to. And Regina King, she's knocking it out of the park. Yeah. You know, and I'm proud of her for what she's doing. So I could see you doing that in the future. Um, I want to backtrack a little, not to rehash on stuff, but I always wanted to ask you, from the losing Isaiah, um... Did you notice for a while that you were being typecast through your years because keep people kept reverting back to that movie? Mm -hmm. When was that point where people started seeing you as an actor instead of the kid from losing Isaiah? Because that seems to come up all the time, you know, and that happens sometimes, and it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. But when was that moment that people started realizing, like, yo, Mark is a damn good actor, because you are. I appreciate it. Um, well, I, I just believe in, in this philosophy, right? It go, it go back to, like, grade school. 
if you're the kid that, you know, let's say you peed your pants one day when you was going to the front of the class to like answer something on the board and that's what people remember you by. Like, oh, you're the kid, you peed your pants. You just got to do something else memorable, you know? Once you beat up the bully or you date the, 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 the baddest chick in school or, or you flip the teacher off and tell her, you know, go screw yourself. Once you create that new memory, that's what people will now start to associate you with. So losing Isaiah was a classic for a lot of people. You know, it, it was definitely a classic. So the, the, the thing that kind of recreated that or, or, and people still to this day are like, aren't you the kid from losing Isaiah? So I'll never escape that. But once I started doing other classic films, you know, Get Rich or Die Trying, Notorious, even like the Haunted Mansions and the Story of the Twos and things like that, it gave people something different to something else to remember me by. So just continuing to do good work, you know, continuing yeah, to do good work. And I'm glad you are. And that, that's why I'm asking that. It's kind of funny, man, when I was in class and if I happen to do peeing in my pants, I step up my game and I just do number two just to let people know I'm in the house. <laughs> Word, you gotta change it up. You gotta switch it up. You know, like you gotta let them know. <laughs> yeah, you keep doing the same thing. That's all people going and be like, "Oh, that's the that's the nigga that pisses pants all the time." <laughs> now, what I would like to see you in, um, Black Panther has become an amazing comic, especially <clears throat> especially for the African American community, and uh, the loss of Chadwick Boseman. Uh, just hit home run with every nationality, every race. I would love to see you, um, not so much in that role, but I would love to see you in that movie because it seems that movie, especially with Marvel, brings out some of the best African-American actors there is. Yeah. And I, I really, I would love to see you in that role. But the question I, I would like to, I've never asked this before, would you play a superhero character? And the reason why I'm asking that I notice a lot of great actors tend to stay away from being a superhero because if you happen to land a role, what happens is some people will just see you in that role. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you lose other roles because they see you as, and I've seen it happen with people that were in Superman and everybody else. Would you consider a superhero role or would you stay away from it? Oh, for sure, man, in a heartbeat, what? Give me a case. Call me a let, man. Listen, yeah, yes, I would. Um, okay. And, and I, I, I feel like there's definitely truth to that. I, you know what it is? It's like a lot of people that get casted as heroes and things like that. They've never really done any of the work. You know, right. like they never done any projects that were like real big or very memorable projects pri prior to that. So playing that Marvel role or that DC role, it puts them at the peak. It puts them, you know, on the pedestal suddenly. And mm -hmm. the work that they do once they get that role is even more important. Mm -hmm. So when I do, because I, that's actually like on my, my, my bulletin board, right? It's like my list, one of my top on my list is to be a part of a Marvel MCU project a DC project or not or and Star Wars. So it's Marvel or DC and Star Wars. I need I need both of those. You know? So oh, yeah. um yeah, I need both. I'm greedy. So I think Star Wars is on everybody's bucket list. Like, yeah, that's being one like, Lucas movie to be a part of it. My man. And then I don't if I could be an alien, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm slightly funny looking anyway. So just pay me green and Call me like, like make me an alien. I'm good with that. But Star yep. Wars and DC or Marvel, that's like top of my list. So that's what I'm going after. So when that happens, it I would more so focus on doing projects that have real stories in between. Right. You know, I will I will focus on doing things that appeal to a different type of audience. Mm -hmm. I will focus on, yeah, just more, the, the, the more dramatic, gritty stories. Like, if I'm already at the peak of action and adventure and sci-fi, why would I do smaller action, adventure, sci-fi movies in between? No, right. I'm going to go and do something else. So if I'm running around in Static Shock or Black Panther or whoever in Marvel, 
the movies I'm gonna do in between is playing Trayvon Martin, or is about, is is gonna be like the kid that oh, has uh, PTSD that returned from home from the war. I'm gonna do stories like that, you know. So, um, yeah, man, I'm ready for that, that superhero be, action, though, bro. I would love to see you in a civil rights type of movie. Yeah, because I think you would bring because you're from the BX, if a lot of people don't know. And I've been to the BX. You know some of my close friends from the BX. Um, that's a hardcore place to grow up. And you see everything. I think you would be great for some type of role that had to do with civil rights. Because I, I think it would be such a personal thing. Yeah, dude, I think it would be amazing. I think you'd kill it. I really do. That's uh, Add that to your bucket list. Yeah. That would be pretty crazy. Because honestly, right now, these stories that are happening right now, they're going to need to be told on some sort of Netflix volume five to ten years from now because right now it's too soon. Nobody wants to, you know, rehash, but I think those films would definitely be told. You know I'm a good I'm a good friend of Crump. I've been supporting my man Keon Howard on the news. You've probably seen me on all that. Yeah. Um, I would love to see you on that role. And if I can have her connect you with Ben Crump, just call me. I will yeah. connect you guys like that because that would be dope for you. That. Yeah, of course. Now, another great thing, and you were speaking on going from here to there, you're obviously, you're in the drama field already of acting. Mm -hmm. you, you cover drama. You've done every type of role there is from violence to family to everything else growing up. You did a lot of cameo roles from Dexter, and the list goes on and on. You did ER, if a lot of people don't know about that. That actually show I actually rewatched recently, and I didn't realize it at the time that it was you when I was watching back then, but that role was dope because you played a kid who pretty much was defending himself, and the same kid would follow you after school and shock you, and that happens every day, which is horrible. Now, when it comes to these roles, would you consider doing a role back on TV, or would that deflect your roles from coming into the movies? Because does that mean you're backtracking? Or is that just something to keep you relevant if you decided to do that? Um, hold on, I'm gonna answer that. Let me grab, I'm gonna turn my light on real quick because it's getting dark. Hold on, one second. All right. So guys, why Mark's getting the light? Again, if you guys are ever in Astoria, check out New York City Bagel and Cafe. They have amazing bagels, great coffees, great hospitality, great people that work there, and they got three locations, New York City Bagel and Cafe in Astoria. And we're back with Mark John Jeffries. So, Mark, we got the light going. So tell me about it. Um, I would definitely do TV again. I, 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 I like TV, you know. Uh, I just, I'm on City on the Hill season two uh, now. I'm on, like, three or four episodes of that project with uh, Kevin Bacon and Aldous Hodge. So, you know, make sure y'all check that out. Uh, I recently did Blue Bloods not too long ago. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like TV. I definitely would not turn TV down. I feel like TV is consistent. You know, it gives you a particular art for character work and all of that other stuff. However, I would prefer to be like a season lead to where after like one or two seasons, I'm out. Um... If I were to do four, five, six seasons on a show, man, that show would have to be, like, an incredible show. Yeah. I'm not knocking it, but it would just have yeah. to be a great show for me to want to commit to six seasons, you know. Um, yeah, it got to be – it has to be, like, a power or an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. type caliber or uh, – Day, if WandaVision, man, if they had six seasons of WandaVision, throw me on that joint. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, what? Or the Obi Wan yeah, joint, what? Man, I'll take, I'll do that six year bid, you know. But um, I definitely do not feel like TV is is a step back or is any lesser than film. I just feel like it's a different audience, you know. And certain actors have great TV careers, and other actors have great movie careers, and so far, I, I feel like I've been a little bit of both. Like, I've really balanced both. I think I may have more... I think I have more TV credit than film credits, actually. Um, but I film is what I like. I mean, when, I, 
Yeah, because you've done a lot of cameo roles. You did a couple of season roles to one or two. When I looked at your roster, I honestly didn't realize how deep it went. Like, yeah. you've really been consistently working, and it's crazy how many. You want to know something? I think TV, you have a much better chance of building a career on TV today than you did back then. Because mm -hmm. today, everything's going to TV now. Right yeah. now, all movies are making deals now where they're not only going to AMC, but they're also making a deal with Netflix at the same time because they're realizing there's more money to be made going straight to TV than there is going to the theater. And now more actors on shows have the opportunity to become seasoned because more eyes are actually watching the shows. Because the other thing, too, is there are so many shows out there right now. Yeah. But the difference is if they're a good show, and Netflix, say, buys it or Amazon or Hulu, they become reruns, mm -hmm. right? And if they're that good, they may be like, you know what? This show that we canceled is continually being watched by people. Let's bring it back and make a season five. And I've been noticing yeah. that with the shows as well. So you're right. Things definitely can be a career on that. Yep. Yeah, yep. which is pretty crazy. Fact. What? I said that's a fact. Yes, definitely in fact. Let, let's talk about something else. We talked about offline. There are a, a lot of roles happening in Hollywood right now, right? A lot of roles, a lot of films. Um, are you, and I know you said you're not, but we really want to hit on this. What are the re one of the reasons why we're not seeing you in a lot of these films? Are, they, are you still being looked at because of your faith? You have a young faith. Mm -hmm. are they hesitant to book you in an adult role? Because you're an adult. Like, people need to understand that. You're a man. You're a man. You're an adult. You even said in my last interview, when I asked you about Holly Barry and how he's like, oh, my baby. You're like, listen, I ain't a baby no more. I'm a man now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or, but is Hollywood still seeing you when they cast you, being a little hesitant on booking you on more adult roles? Because you have such a young-looking face. Mm-hmm. Um, I think so. I, 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 I've had these conversations with my team and, um, yeah, they, they, one of the things that's been a consistent thing is like, I'm 30, but when I shave, I look like I'm 18, 17, 18, like on, on City on a Hill, my character is 16, 17. So, um, yeah, man, I look young. You know, I definitely would say that I look young, but I also would say that there's a lot of dope, talented young guys that's coming up, you know. And uh, for me, uh, one of my friends was telling me about this the other day, like he's a producer. And he was saying, for you, Mark, it's all about relevance because you're not a newcomer. You know, you're you're a person that people know. So when your name is brought up, you're being compared more so to like, actors that have worked under their belt and if they have projects that were big that they currently are attached to or or mm -hmm. that they just did or just came out they're a little bit more relevant than where you're at you're not compared to newcomers so you're either you're battling against the people that have more you know fame or buzz than you right now or you're battling against the filmmakers that are just like no we want somebody fresh we don't want them to see or, or to associate this character with any of his past work, you know? So um, I feel like it's a combination. It's, it's a mixture of things. I feel it's that. Um, I feel like I got away from myself as a performer a little bit, uh, just with, like, not, not being as focused on the type of roles that fit me. I became... I, I like challenges, man. You know, like, I don't like yeah. grabbing low-hanging fruit. Cause I'm like anybody can get that. I want to, I want to join at the top of the tree, you know. So, um, I feel like I challenge myself big time as a performer to be like, well, if you're good enough, even though this is what you fit and look, this is what I want, you know, in ability. And um, that was something that I got caught up in for a little while, and mm -hmm. I have finally like overcame that i would say just because i realized that uh 
the beauty of myself as a performer is my my versatility you know so i kind of like broke through that wall so i got some things coming out man i got i got some i got some heat you know i got some heat um but yeah definitely still want more you know like i i wanted to be a part of judas and the black messiah i feel like that's a great movie um and big congrats to everybody that was part of it but I would have destroyed that. Any role they would have gave me, I could have been a dude with a mop. And they y'all would have been like, yo, he acted the hell out of standing there with that mop. You know, but um, some of those roles, yeah, they just don't swing my way. But mark my words, it's going to happen. Like, they yeah, cannot, <laughs> you can't deny me for too long because I don't, I don't knock at doors, bro. I don't knock at no, doors. No. I either break them down or I come through the window. Straight gorilla style. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't believe in walls. So it's yeah. going to happen. Speaking it's just a matter of time. Speaking of coming through windows, man, can I, can I have my stereo back? Because, you know, you came through one night. You took my stereo. You took my, my Walkman. That was like 20 years ago. Can I get that stuff back, please? <laughs> I don't know where that's at, dog. <laughs> I don't know where that's at. <laughs> so guys right now uh just to interrupt uh if you guys want to follow mark i always do this during the show make sure on instagram you follow him on mark john j no mark yeah mark john j i got that right yeah. and always you can follow me at todd warden official we interview celebrities five days a week from all industries a list is up today a list is back in the day uh then let's continue with mark so mark you know what you sound like the way you're just talking you sound like a young Denzel because that's exactly the attitude Denzel has when he goes to act or chooses a role. Um, he always goes for the top of the tree, right? Yeah. And every role that he's ever grabbed, that tree just went down and he still stood up there on his own, yeah. which is crazy. And you're there, dude. And that's the attitude that everybody needs to have when they're in any type of industry because there is no role too big and there's no role too small that you can't handle. And uh, I like that attitude, man, if you're doing that. to be a mentorship for people to listen to that are on here right now to understand what you're doing. Um, speaking of some of the projects, you already mentioned some of the things you're doing, Kevin. Is there anything that's coming up that you can actually talk about? Um, because I know there are always things that you can't talk about because I remember a couple of things we spoke about off camera years mm -hmm. ago, and I know they didn't really happen, but mm -hmm. they're they're working, and that's just Hollywood. Hollywood sometimes would just be like, hey. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I definitely got all right. So let's see. So we got City on the Hill. We already spoke about. We got Fells High yeah. that we already spoke about. Um, I'm attached to a project to play a dope. Uh, historical figure. I cannot say who. Yeah, two of them that I, I can't say who. Uh, my boy is developing a dope project that will be, I think we're supposed to start shooting like the end of May. And it, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be cool. Man, it's, just, it's a lot. Like right now, it's a, lot, a lot of things that I'm on is are in the very early uh, pre-production or we haven't shot yet stages. So, like, I can't talk about things before press releases and all of that. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I, I got know. some things. But, I'm, I'm but, being a talk show host. I'm like, give me, give me something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, this is the funny thing about me, too. Like, so, one, I'm going to get a call, maybe, if – they're on this, right? They're watching. I'm going to get a call from somebody mad at me because I didn't talk about or mention a project that I have coming out. Just because, like, I forget. I'm, I'm about, I'm a, I'm a present and future man. I'm, I'm right. focused on what I'm doing right now and what I'm about to do, you know? Or, or not even, what I'm doing right now and what will I be doing in six months? That's just, that's just how I am. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm blessed to be a part of all of these dope joints that I am working on and attached to and all of that other stuff, but I'm still like, 
what's the next big one? You know, like when is the next, when is that next game changing role? And and that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm focused on. So one, you want to know when the next big one's going to be? Is when that? you're a part of it. When you're a part of it. You feel me? I feel you because I've known you for a long time and I'm pretty much honest with everybody. You know that. Like, you can be the biggest star on the planet, but if you're not a nice person, you have an ego about you, I won't rock with you. Yeah. But from day one, I've always been truthful with you. And then now speaking with your pop, dude, you are the future star of Hollywood. I'm For telling sure. you that right now. And I don't like the fact, and you did explain to it, that a lot of these directors and producers are looking for the it now instead of what's actually good for the role because they're doing it for social media publicity-wise. And even though you have a good following, I'm sorry, man, but if I was directing, and yeah, this person's relevant right now, but if you're an A-lister, you should always be an A-lister in everybody's mind. And I would look at Season as a director and be like, listen, let's talk to Mark because he's worked with this person, Holly Barry, this person, that person, he obviously can handle himself. He's obviously around big people who won Oscars. Why wouldn't we want this guy in our role? You know, and a lot of people need to get back to that because I'm sick and tired of people getting booked because whether they look a certain part or their social media following is just way up there. And it shouldn't be about following. It should be about talent. And that's what Hollywood needs to get back to. And that's what's happening right now with a lot of these roles and a lot of these characters. And I'm not going to knock the young ones because they all deserve a chance too. But I really wish more directors and producers would really, and casting directors would really cast based on the talent and not by the following. And yeah. That's a strong yeah, I mean, I, I definitely feel you. I, I will say this. There's a lot of like, in, with, with young Hollywood, I would say that there's, there's still a lot of talent there. You know, like, I don't... Um, of course, the, the politics of the industry, the politics of the industry, and and I understand it, right? It, it's 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 been there, and I can't be upset that certain platforms have given young people a stool to stand on. Like I'm, I love that. I'm, I, I applaud that. I want everybody uh, that possibly can start their careers to do it. You know, so um, just for me personally, I, I kind of like it. I like the. I like the mountain. I, I like, like, I like the challenge. I, I do not mind it just because the journey makes the reward even more, you know, enjoyable. So, um, yeah, man, let them, let them cast off of numbers and all of that other stuff. That's cool because when the one that comes along, you know, that is able to, to be that one for me, it's a wrap. Exactly. You know, it's, it's it's a wrap. So it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. And, and I'm just the type of person, like, I always look within. So I'm like, okay, they may have four, five, six, seven hundred thousand more followers than me. But what does that tell me about me? You know, if if my performance was really that good, that wouldn't matter. And I just look at that for myself because it it's the only thing that I can pay attention to. Is fine tuning mm -hmm. yourself. Like I feel like we live in a society where they make it okay to be weak minded. You know, they make it okay to create all of these reasons and excuses why you're not getting nowhere. I didn't get the job because they don't want to hire black people or because I'm too this or you know they it was because this person had more followers. Maybe you just wasn't good enough. Maybe yeah. that. Maybe he was just better than you and happened to have more followers. You know, maybe you did just as good as him and they like. Why would we pay him three times the amount if we can get this new dude that has way more followers than him and pay him a third of what we would have to pay him? And he's pretty much almost there, you know? So I look at all of that stuff, man. I don't create, I don't create any excuses for myself. I don't hold on to like any, anything externally about why somebody else, like we are in control of our own destination. So I embody that fully, you know? So I haven't been in those roles because I was not good enough and that will change. I like that attitude, it's very humble. Speaking of roles, you know, you know what's kind of cool? When I spoke to Todd Bridges, 
uh, he let me in on they're, they're redoing different strokes. Oh, snap. And okay. I'm letting you know that I'm not talking about the Gary Coleman role because that rolls out. <laughs> I would love to see you do because <laughs> everybody's going to assume that right away. Right. Um, I would love to see you do a part in that because Different Strokes was a show I grew up watching. And I always wanted to be on. I always wanted to get myself a little Janet Jackson. Okay. <laughs> I was younger. Well, I'm sorry, man. Janet has always been banging. But even when she was younger, when I was a kid, yeah, I, I was like, Ooh, that's a cute girl right there. All right. <laughs> my age, so I could say that. But I would love to just see you do a little cameo role if, if they pop that joint out because that's a legendary show. Yeah. And they're keeping the focus on interracial relationships and everything happening today because a lot of people don't realize Different Strokes was ahead of its time and it was showing an example of how everybody can come together and blend together as a family. That's why Different Strokes is so big. And, uh, man, I would love to see you just do something in that, you know. So maybe you could be the next Dayton Janet Jackson for a couple of days and take it away from Willis. <laughs> that may be. You never know, dog, you know. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. You come in on a roll, you'd be like, yo, I got Jackson now, Willis. And he'd be like, what you talking about, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Which would be great. Mark, Jeez. listen, man, it, it's uh, – it's always a pleasure seeing you, bro. Um, Definitely. I love talking to you, man. I can talk to you for hours. Um, I see it's getting late. I know you little kid. It's about that time that your little <laughs> kid needs a little father time. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's about to be he's about to be aching any minute. But <laughs> Mark, we, we spoke about a lot of things that are going on. Again, guys, follow Mark on Instagram on Mark John J. Um, on Instagram. Mark, you have a website, by the way. Where can people find everything about you in one spot? Uh, I think my website is down. I, I, I think it's being revamped. Yeah, so it may be okay. down, but it is my the same as my Instagram handle, dot .com. So markjohnj.com. Beautiful, beautiful. And guys, we've been speaking with Mark John J. And John, as always, it's been John. Um, you know what it is? I always call you John, Jeff, or Mark because you're like the only person I know that's got three first names, and it's really confusing. <laughs> Mark John Jeffries. That's right, man. You're like the Michael Jordan of acting. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> and Jay, you know? But, guys, coming up uh, this week and next week, got to give everybody a little holla. Uh, tomorrow night, we got Young Dirty Bastard coming up. Thursday, we got Hector Macho Camacho. Friday, we got Tyler Ross from Love and Hip Hop. And then next week, we got a great lineup. We got a lore. R&B group's going to be here on Monday. We got actor and comedian Michael Winslow from Spaceballs and Police Academy going to be here. Wednesday, we got um, Tom Malloy. If you guys don't know Tom, Tom's from the Alphabet Killer. You guys will know him right away. Thursday, we got Mike Hans from the Blue Pan Click. And then we got to follow it up with Kick Capri's daughter, Vino Love, is going to be in the house from Growing Up Hip Hop. So, Mark, it's been a great interview. Thank you for being on the show, man. Always love when you come on, man, always. And I can't wait to see you again soon when COVID is up. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks for having me, man, for sure. You got it, you, you, got, it, you got it. And, guys, as always, please wear your mask. Please practice social distancing. As I always say, we are apart right now, but we're all in this together, as always, and we need to help each other to get back on track. And for all the celebrities out there and agents and managers, if you want to be on the show, go to bookings at FaceTime with ToddWarden.com. Send us your request. Mark, I see a great future with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in a cape and side by <laughs> side with the Falcon boy. And I want to see you kicking <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, guys, have a great night. This is Todd Warden from FaceTime with Todd Warden. And as always, if you're not living a passionate life, then whose life are you living? Guys, have a great night. Talk to you soon.